Hello Star Wars fans and welcome to episode 31 of Journey into Legends. Today we are going to be completing our read through of the Young Jedi Knights series. Young Jedi Knights is a young adult series of 14 novels written by Kevin J. Anderson and Rebecca Moesta. In my last two videos I read and reviewed the first 11 books of the series, so today I'll be finishing the series with the final three books collected in Under Black Sun. So without further ado, let's read and review. Alright, so I've just finished Book 12, Return to Ord Mantell, and this was a pretty good one. There were a few aspects of this book that I liked. First off, I liked that the kids actually went on an adventure with their father from beginning to end. That was pretty fun. I also liked how the kids were able to bring peace to the war-torn world of Anobis, uniting the two factions caught up in a decades-long civil war. And perhaps my favorite part of this book was the multiple references to the Han Solo Adventures trilogy by Brian Daly, brought on by the inclusion of Anya Galandro, the daughter of a villain from that trilogy. It's great to see those wonderful books get some recognition, but I also have a few issues with this book. Other than the introduction of Zethros and Anya Galandro, the Black Sun plotline hardly even started, and this book had a distinct lack of character growth for any of the kids. Not only did Tenelka, Lobaka, and the other kids take a back seat for this one, but Jason and Jaina hardly got any development either. Overall, this was a fun book, but it's also a disappointing start to the arc. But anyways, let's move on to book 13, Trouble on Cloud City. Alright, so I just finished book 13, Trouble on Cloud City, and I thought it was pretty good. In this one, the kids visit Cloud City to help Lando test out his latest business endeavor. This time, it's a new amusement park. When they get there, they learn that Lando's business partner, Kojan, has fallen off of Cloud City to his death, which has been ruled a suicide. The rest of the book involves Lando and the kids' investigation into the mysterious circumstances of Kojan's death. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this plotline. I think Cloud City is a fun location to host an adventure like this, and I enjoyed how the book started to move the main Black Sun plotline forward. I also started to enjoy Anya's character a bit more, as she starts to question her loyalty to both the Young Jedi Knights and Zethros, while at the same time, she's dealing with a spice addiction. However, in my opinion, the main thing that holds this book back from being one of the absolute best in the series is a recurring problem I've had with this arc so far, and that's the lack of any significant character growth for our main characters, something that I thought was very well done in the first two arcs. Overall, this was a decently fun one, but it's not one of my favorites. But now it's time to move on to the final book of the series, Book 14, Crisis at Crystal Reef. Alright, so I've just finished Book 14, Crisis at Crystal Reef, and I thought it was decent. This one starts with Anya taking off from Yavin 4 in search for some more spice. The kids soon follow her trail to Kessel, then to Mon Calamari where we have two separate storylines. On Kessel, Jaina, Loey, and MTD, with help from everyone's favorite Celestin, Nian Num, come at odds with Zethros, while on Mon Calamari, Jason, Tanelka, Zek, and Anya, as well as Ambassador Silgal, destroy Zethros' huge stash of Andra's spice. Overall, this one was a fun adventure, but in my opinion wasn't a very satisfying conclusion to the arc, and especially the series as a whole. I was hoping that we'd have an adventure with the original four main characters of the group, but almost immediately they get split up and go on separate missions. And although Anya starts to overcome her addiction and her grudge against Han Solo, I would have loved to see her confront Zethros for some answers, but we don't get that either. I just feel like this book set up some interesting things to come that never quite paid off, which was quite disappointing. I enjoyed seeing Nian Num and Silgal, and I enjoyed visiting Kessel and Mon Calamari, but in my opinion, the scale was far too small and the stakes were far too low for this finale. However, my biggest problem with this book, and this Black Sun trilogy as a whole, was the lack of character growth. Other than Anya, none of the young Jedi Knights go through significant development, which was one of the strongest parts of the previous two arcs. Overall, this was definitely my least favorite of the three arcs. The scale was smaller, the characters were much less interesting, the story was less interesting, the plot progressed far too slowly, and it didn't stick the landing nearly as well as the other two arcs. But, the series as a whole I thought was fantastic. I fell in love with these characters and these books were a blast to read. They were fun, 
lighthearted, short, and easy to read, and while some are better than others, I don't genuinely dislike any one of them. Stay tuned for a full ranking of the series in the next few days. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next review, where I'll be reading the comic River of Chaos. See ya.